This morning I am starting from the yard and I actually got to get home midweek. I had the blower on yesterday so I came back to the yard, dropped that. I was back last night at about half past six and I didn't need to start today until six so I thought I'd make the most of it and go home as my trailer wasn't back but it is now back and I can hitch up to that this morning. I've been pulling the curtain side out and the blower this week and unfortunately every time I get my trailer back no one seems to want to wash it. Before I completely back up onto the pin I always get out and have a little check to make sure I am lined up correctly. Perfect. I am in exactly the right place so I lift the air up to make sure that the fifth wheel is in contact with the plate on the trailer and then I come back onto the pin and then I give it two shunts forwards to make sure that the pin is in got some brand new gloves this morning as well. It's starting to um, get very dark in the mornings now. We're staying very dark in the morning, should I say. First things first. Mm -hmm. And I've got my new gloves silky already. Great. Then I connect my hydraulic hose, Susie's and Anderson lead. I wind my legs right up to the top and stow the handle away safely. I put my truck's number plate on the trailer, release the trailer brake and then I can turn the engine on to build the air up in the trailer. And now I just need to complete my walk around check. One thing I am going to check is the back of the trailer to check that it's been swept out because I know that it had grain on last night and I am now going to go and pick up sand. So it's very, very important that it's spotless. And I'm pleased to say that at least the inside was clean. I'm just going to fill out my ticket book and my defect book. I am ready to go. The quarry that I'm loading at this morning is not very far away at all. It's only one junction north on the M5 and it's around 20 minutes away. I'm not sure who this is going the other way, but they gave me a big flash. Unfortunately, I can't show you anything inside this quarry. But I do have a queue of about one, two, three, four, five, six trucks in front of me. But generally, aggregate doesn't take too long to load, so I shouldn't be here too long. From start to finish, I was in there for about half an hour. And now I am on my way up the motorway towards Bristol. But before I get to Bristol, I need to make a quick pit stop. I've popped into Sedgemore Services for two reasons. The first one being when we get the details for the quarry works. I was told the quarry to Bristol and... It could be anywhere in Bristol. I don't know the actual place where I'm tipping at until I get my paperwork free. When I weigh out, there's nowhere to park up and plan my route. So I've actually, I've got my ticket. I have actually been to this place before. It's not my favorite place to go in and out of, but you'll see where when I get there because it's a bit full on. The other reason is that my phone charger seems to have given up and it's one charger for my earpiece my iPhone and my work phone. So <laughs> it's something that I do actually really need. I'm gonna pop in here and see if they've got a charger. 20 whole pounds for a charger, but I had to get it, I do need it. I'll be stuffed without it. I won't know what work I'm doing. Ooh, that might be a good thing. I won't have to do anything. Now that I know where I'm going, I can make my way to the builder's merchant where I need to tip this load of sand. I continue on the M5 until I get up to the M4. I head east on the M4 for one junction and then I take the M32 slip road towards Bristol. I continue on the M32 and come off at junction three where I pass Eastern towards St. Phillips. Just around this roundabout, there are some Thomas the Tank engine faces painted on these tanks to the right. When I see these, I know I've gone the right way. I head under a low bridge and at the end of this road, it's quite difficult to get out, especially at rush hour. I'm looking left and right so much, I think my head might fall off. I finally get a break and I squeeze down the road. And then I'm finally there. And as I swing round into the yard, I'm really surprised how quiet it is. Normally this yard is full of trucks, vans and trailers waiting to be loaded. paperwork together and I'll go and see somebody. 
so I just need to wait for these fans here and here to move out the way. I can get round and tip. I think this must be my lucky day because I don't have to wait long at all. And I've got a clear route round to the bay, just here on my offside. There's not a huge amount of room in here, even on a day like today. But when there are vehicles parked everywhere and fault lifts dotting around, it's quite often really difficult to manoeuvre. The bay is quite empty, which is helpful, so I can get quite far back into the bay and will mean that when I start tipping, I will be straight. I've also got to be really careful of the front of the truck as I swing round, as there are bags of building materials in front of me. The bay is fairly narrow, but I'm going to try and keep as close to the offside as I possibly can, and I will show you why in a minute. I need to give it a little shunt forwards to straighten it up, and then I can back up to the pile at a reasonable distance. I want to be close enough to get it all in the bay, but not so close that as I tip up, the tailboard digs into the sand and the sand pushes it off. As you can see, I'm really close on this side but not as close on the other side. And this is so that as I tip up and pull out of the bay and turn the corner, my tailboard won't catch the side of the bay like clearly some other drivers have. Check my distance from the pile, I undo my twist locks and release the bar. I also have a double check of the load to make sure that it's not heavy on one side. And then it's back into the truck to start tipping. I open my sheet and I put my onboard weigher on so that I can see how much is left in the trailer. Then I can lift the trailer up, moving forwards very slightly as the load comes out. I need to turn slightly as I come out of the bay, as once the load is out, I won't be able to back up to turn the corner. Once I'm happy it's all out, I can put the body back down and get my brush to go and sweep the trailer out. I'm happy with how neat the sand has come out and it's all in the bay. I now need to sweep out the traces of sand that are left. Red sand always stains the trailer and even after washing, you will see a red stain for some time afterwards. I brush off any loose sand on the back of the trailer and in the grain hatch and then I can close the tailboard up, ready to go back out onto the road. And that's it, we are done here and I want to leave as quick as I possibly can before it potentially gets busy again. Hello, all right? How is it going? Um, I've just tipped at Bristol. Okay, Newport. Yes, please, yeah, Newport to Oversbury, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right, have a job. All right, thanks, Dylan. As I pull out, I need to be very careful of those bags of building materials that are on the floor in front of the truck. And then once I am clear, I can manoeuvre my way out of the tight exit. And I'm still really shocked with how quiet it is in here, although I am quite relieved that it is. And now I'm off to Newport, so I basically go back the way that I came until I get to the M4. I go west on the M4, heading for Wales, which takes me up over the second seven crossing. There are two ways to get down to Newport Docks, and if the traffic is good, there is no time in it whatsoever. On the way in, I decide to come off at Junction 23A and follow the roads in that way, and as I head over the flyover to the docks, I can see the road I need to be on, which loops around and goes underneath. When I get into the docks, there is already somebody on the waybridge, so I just need to wait for him to weigh out before I can get on the waybridge myself. I get my paperwork together, and then I can go and weigh in, which doesn't take me long at all. The shovel driver is waiting just there, so I should get loaded really, really quickly. He is very quick as well. I'm not sure where. Apparently, I've got to follow him. Drive safely. I think I've got to go around there. I'm not 100% sure. Okay, so Eventually the door does open and we can head into the shed. He puts his bucket up to show me where he wants to load, so I get myself into the position where he's not loading over the sheet. I am loading maize which is very dusty and you'll see the difference between the first bucket and the last bucket. I give him a little beep to let him know that I'm full up and then I can put my sheet back on and leave the shed for the weighbridge. Although I need to be a bit careful as the shed is now very dusty from loading and I need to be aware of where the shovel driver is. It almost looks like the sun is trying to peer through the clouds as I get back onto the weighbridge. I do. Got my paperwork. I 
now it's off to Holsborough Bay. I had a little look on Google Maps and the traffic looks quite quiet both ways out of Newport so I decided to go back out the other way which takes me back out onto the M4 at Junction 24 and it's back up over the second seven crossing and once I get over the bridge I take the slip road for the M49 which will take me towards the southwest and onto the M5 going south. By this point I am nearly up on my seven and a half hours drive in so I stop in Gordano services for a break. I'm looking for a space as close to the services buildings as I possibly can find and I find the perfect spot. It's a nice easy space to back into as well. It must be my lucky day or have I just spoke too soon? I make sure I put my taco on break. That is that. And then I get my stuff ready to go and have a shower. It is a little bit early for a shower but I don't think I will get one later on because I'm going down to Holsworthy which is just off the A30 and once you start going down the A30 there's nothing there, not until you get to Victoria. I think it's the best option to have my shower now rather than wait and risk not being able to have one later on. Well that didn't go so well. The shower was locked so I went and asked for the key. The lady said that there was somebody already in there. And I said, how long ago did they go in? She said 10 minutes. Went and got a coffee and had a sandwich. I went back and the lady still hadn't come out of the shower. So by this point, the lady has probably been in the shower for about 35 minutes. I can't see a female trucker being in the shower for 35 minutes. I think I was being fibbed to a bit there. Resulting in yet another occasion where I haven't been able to get a shower. Hopefully I will be able to get one later on. And with that, my break's up and I'm ready to go. But there's a couple of guys here doing a trailer swap, so I wait for them to finish manoeuvring before I pull away. I'm also looking at their nice trucks too. If the fuel station is empty, then I am... Oh, what's going on here? I just need to get a drop of fuel while I'm here. Might as well get it here rather than down the road a bit. It seems the price of diesel is going up again. Then I continue heading south on the M5 and just after Exeter, I split off onto the A30. I stay on the A30 until I get to Oakhampton and I head all the way out to Holsworthy on the windy hilly roads. For where I'm going, I need to take this narrow road that goes into a dip, but there is a chance that I might meet some other big vehicles as there is a low bridge in Holsworthy. And this road allows you to avoid that low bridge. With my truck, I can get under it, but to go that way, it would be going out of my way. The last bit up the hill is a really steep climb, so I always put it into manual. And I always hope that at the roundabout at the top, I will be able to keep going and there will be nothing in my way. Within five minutes from there, I am in the mill. I get myself weighed in and they take a sample of the load. They're happy with the load, so then they tell me which bay I need to tip on. So I head up the yard towards the bays. I've just got to wait for one person to finish on the pit and then I can go on. I've sat here for about 20 minutes already, so he should be nearly off now, which isn't too bad up here. And actually there's nobody else waiting up here either for any other pits. Sometimes you can be waiting for four or five to tip before you have to tip, so I'm pretty pleased with that. In the end, I am waiting for about half an hour and then I come back onto the pit. I do feel very lucky for only waiting half an hour as a girl on the Weybridge told me that last night there were seven lorries waiting for the same pit because they all turned up at the same time. She has also given me a card to swipe on the pit but I can't swipe it yet as the pit is still cleaning out from the last load. So I get my gloves and go and put the grain sock on and get myself all set up and ready for when it's finished cleaning out. And by the time I've done all that, it is ready to scan my badge. Once it's thought about it for a little minute, it tells me to tip. So then I can engage my PTO and lift the body up. And the only thing left to do now is get my grain hatch handle and open the grain hatch. As we've seen before when I was loading it, maize is very dusty. But once the pit fills up, it settles dust because it is going through the grain sock and that is the purpose of the grain sock is to reduce the dust and to stop the loads spilling out everywhere. I'm just gonna give the office a quick ring and see what I've got next because I don't actually know what I've got next. I've got a good guess. Trouble is though, when you guess, you're normally wrong. Hello? 
Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I am tipping. That's the plan at the moment, but he'll be back in a minute. He's just out in the store. Okay, so, um, okay. He'll be back in a minute and I'll get him to call you. All right. Yeah, all right. All right. right. On this pit, it takes me about 40 minutes to tip. Once the trailer is empty, I can take the grain sock off, fold it up and put it away on the trailer. Then I can undo the twist locks and release the last little bit that's left on the trailer. Then I put the body down and I already know I'm going to have to give it a good sweep out. So I prop the door open and then I get in the back to see how much is left in there. There is a little bit of maize left in there, but most of it is dust. And the dust seems to stick to the side of the trailer just as much as it sticks to the floor. Be sure that there is no bits of maize stuck in the grain hatch and dust off any excess dust. And then once I'm happy I've done everything I can, I do up the tailboard. Last but not least, I brush up the pit so that it's clean for the next driver. I then need to press clean out on the pit and put my brush away. Now to go and weigh out. And then I head back around the one-way system to the Weybridge. Got my ticket. And then I can continue on the one-way system to the exit. I head out of the industrial estate and down through the centre of Holsworthy under the low bridge. And I am now heading for Launceston. There is an industrial estate there where I can park up for the night. And it seems to be pretty busy down there. But eventually I do spot a space that is big enough for my truck. I haven't parked up here for quite some time, but it's busier than I remember it to be. So that's me all parked up in Launceston and the quarry that I'm loading out of tomorrow is not that far away, only about 10 minutes. The quarry shuts at 4, which I'm well past that. I need 11 off anyway, so I guess it's worked out alright. I am now going to have some tea. So for my tea tonight, what I have... First thing I am going to do is I've got a pot and I've got some broccoli. There is quite a lot of green beans there. Yeah, that's quite a lot of beans. I wasn't expecting that many beans. I'm gonna go for it anyway. My beans and broccoli in my pot. Put the lid on. I'm going to microwave them. About five minutes. So while I am waiting for that to Cook. The next thing I'm going to do is I've got a bit of salmon here that can go in my Tupperware. I used the other half, well I was going to use it last night but it's going to be tonight now because I ended up going home and forgetting to take my tea home. To top it all off I have got some creamy mushroom sauce which I'm just going to pour in with it. I actually prefer cheese sauce, but they didn't have any, so I got mushroom. I don't mind mushroom. Started making a cup of tea as well, so I'm gonna have a cup of tea with it. Right, so now my vegetables are done. My veggies are very hot. I'm gonna leave the lid on so it like steams them a bit more. I'm gonna put this in for five minutes as well. Very hot. So now what I can do is I can put my vegetables. Oh, I just lost a bean in the door, wasn't it? Mm. Very nice. It's now pouring down with rain outside, so I shut the curtains and I've got a bit of um, evening reading. So I've bought this book, West Country Trucks, um, by David Lee. It looks really cool. I haven't read it yet, but I really, I can't wait to have a good read of it. I've looked through some of the photos and the photos are brilliant. So you've got Ryan Goritz's truck on the very front um, and that's it after it was repainted. Um, I think there's a photo in there actually of before it got repainted. When I ordered it from David, he did say, that Wayne's isn't actually in there. Um, but to be fair, I could write a book about Wayne's. How I ordered this book, I messaged David Lee on Facebook and he sent me through his bank details and I just got it sent to Wayne's Transport. Actually, when it turned up in the yard, there was quite a few of the uh, older drivers couldn't wait to look through it with me. So 
Well, we looked at the pictures anyway. They can't read. So this is a taster of what's inside the book and doesn't it look fantastic? Yeah, that was it before it was repainted. So this book is £35 and it's £5 post and pack in if you want it sent to you. So that's going to be my night tonight and um, then when I can't keep my eyes open any longer I will go to sleep. <laughs>